This is my deck dinner June 19, 2018, and I made, I think it's called Muhammara from the Palestinian table. Well, this, um, this cookbook. I think it was page 74. I'm not sure I could look, but it doesn't matter. It's a roasted red pepper dip, and it has a lot of walnuts, and I put more walnuts than was called for, so it's not it's a, a bit more grainy than it should be, but I plan on doing something else with the rest of it. So that's that. And if uh, you remember watching um, last week sometime, I was making um, this kombucha with the uh, green tea matcha latte instant green tea. <laughs> So it already has the sweetener in it and whatever. And so um, I thought, well, you know, in the summer, I don't like boiling big pots of water to make my kombucha. And I was given that, so I may as well try it out. So I, I'm trying it out and I have my spoon here and I use a ceramic spoon to test it. And um, then I have my regular smoothie in the cup with some I'm going to eat the muhamara with the roasted naan bread, which I warmed up in the toaster. And there's all my pepper powder I made from the... I didn't do a great job grinding it up, but um, from the... What do you call it? Oh, well, the, the pepper pulp. So I made pepper juice and I thought, well, I don't really want to toss all this pulp out. It looks like it could be used to make pepper. So, it, and I used it in this dip, and it's great. So now, like, uh, the dip called for paprika and... Um, I'm just gonna, it was some sort of a, maybe chili? Yeah, chili powder and paprika. And that was page 74. Um, and I just used that instead and it worked out great. Okay, so let's find out if this works. Like, if you look at the kombucha, you know that my scoby really likes this green tea because it's nice, healthy, white scoby. There's, it's just beautiful. It's a lovely pancake on there. And um, so that means that this is full of probiotic. If I have a healthy scoby, I have healthy probiotics in my beverage here. So I'm just going to stop talking, pop this off, and take a little sample. That's perfect. So I'm going to uh, put this in the fridge when I get back. It's nice. It's tart. Like, I like it. I like, well, you know, if you've been watching, I, I use the sour cherries in my smoothie. I don't add any sweetener, and that's just fine for me. So I like things quite tart. So I let, I let my um, yeast eat up all the sugar, and that's good for me. That's lovely. That tastes nice. You can really taste that uh, they use natural fruit flavors. But anyway, <laughs> when I see that, it kind of scares me because it, I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think it's just flavoring, right? Natural fruit flavors doesn't mean it's derived from natural fruit. It doesn't mean that at all. So um, I'm not thrilled about that, but the SCOBY is so good. So if I'm given more of that, yay! I don't have to heat up the house just to make my kombucha to get my probiotics. So, and that was delicious. I don't even need to add, uh, usually I add ginger and mint, or my ginger mint. <laughs> Sometimes just the ginger mint, because it's good on its own. Um, and I'll add a bunch of different other flavors too, like depending on what I feel like. Because uh, you know me, I like to experiment. So, um, but this is just great, just like this. So I will drink this just like this. And uh, so I will leave my dinner. I guess this can sit out here with us. We'll see how this is. 
so the reason that I used a ceramic spoon is because um, there there are some people who are like when there's people making commercial kombucha now they're usually using stainless steel equipment to make the kombucha they're not using glass they may be um, selling it to you in a glass bottle but they're not making it that way it wasn't traditionally made in stainless steel and you're not supposed to touch metal to it um, but I don't know some rules on it I guess because of um, ease of making it for market or whatever now they use it they say oh well you can they've made a lot of uh, changes that some people will say oh yeah it's fine to use stainless steel as long as it's like food grade equipment it's okay or um, it's even fine to use plastic they think if as long as it's food grade you know but for me I like the glass bottles I like doing it the traditional way and so they don't traditionally you don't use a metal spoon you use something else to taste and some people use a straw I don't think that's a good idea but and they'll just stick a straw right under their scoby to taste her but that's how I do it and that's the way it should be done I knew it was good because I'm the cook or in this case the non-cook the food prep whatever Oh, I have black on my fingers because I was trying to use this calligraphy pen I went and bought new cartridges for. I couldn't get it to write, but I could get it to leak all over me. So that was really nice. So I put it away before I got frustrated. And I will hand it to James, who doesn't get frustrated with things like that. He'll just play with them figure them out or not. It's quite delicious. But yeah, I was tasting it while I was making it, so anyway. Lost an apple. My apple tree is going to be loaded with apples if it doesn't lose all of them. I figure it must be deciding it's almost dead. Like often trees will do that. People will think, oh well my tree's really healthy now, it's producing so much fruit now that you know it was almost dead and I got it pruned and now look at it go. Look at it go. It's producing fruit so that it can produce offspring so that they will live. And I think that's what it's doing right now. Now, besides using that pepper powder, I didn't follow the recipe exactly. Like I said, I put too much walnuts in. And I also used uh, pomegranate, more honey and pomegranate powder. Because I didn't have pomegranate molasses. Although there is a recipe in there and I might actually make it. I think they call for sugar. I'm not going to use sugar, but but I might use honey. I don't know. I don't really see the point of making pomegranate molasses. Like I would have to, they say in the recipe, you get 
fresh pomegranate juice to make it and I'd have to get pomegranates I suppose and juice them myself and which you know I'm no stranger to juicing but I just don't know if it's cost effective for living here so I would end up using pomegranate juice from concentrate because that I can often get that on sale for quite cheap I don't know. Anyway. And I just put the olive oil over top. Because like I said, I plan on doing something else with the rest. You know, you can't really go wrong with that from nuts, can you? They sure taste good. Bats from nuts. That's a good dip. She says she uses canned roasted red peppers. Don't do that. I mean, unless you're making it in the middle of summer and it's really hot. I could understand that. just so easy to make. I mean, if you're going to have the oven on in the morning. And you can just, um, well, I have a gas oven, so I just stick the red bell pepper underneath in the broiler, right? And it just blackens right up. You just flip it a few times until the skin's all black. And then you take it out and you stick it in either a paper bag or this time what I did is I folded it inside parchment. And then 
so that it would sweat it out in there. And then once it cooled down a bit, then I just pulled the skin off. It's really easy. And the seeds out. So it really doesn't take any time. If you already have the oven on, stick it in there. So, anyway. That took time. This hardly took time.